Hello YouTube, my name is Patrick and this is my channel 1984. So today I have uh, some uh, a graphics card here. Got uh, another graphics card here. Cooler and some stuff in here. So this card was sent in by uh, Katos. He's from Denmark. He's our new head moderator on our Discord server. So this is a AGP card. It's uh, NVIDIA GeForce 7600GS. So I think there's an AGP to PCIe bridge under here. Uh, it does uh, require some recapping, but should be functional. So I was looking for a card similar to this because uh, I need something for fast Atom XPs and Pentium 4 CPUs, but that is inexpensive. So this is a fairly inexpensive card instead of something like a 5900 Ultra on FX card. And it looks very good in condition. I haven't tested it, but it should be working, you said, uh, just some recapping was required. So thanks to Katos for sending that in, that would help me test my Atom XPM on mobile. I got it in a previous video uh, from an auction. Uh, our server owner, uh, Janne, we're calling him, it's not his actual name, but uh, anyway. He sent in some stuff because I need an adapter. Yeah, so these adapters are for uh, SCSI drives. You can have the 68 pin cable from your controller card here and uh, the SCA 80 pin uh, connector for the hard drive here. It basically replaces the backplane. Uh, probably nothing new to people on my channel. If you built a SCSI system, you might have used a uh, hard drive from a server or something for your workstation. I think I had four of these and I installed at least one of them uh, on his system. Maybe uh, probably two actually. So I don't think any of these actually work. It's just glop, which means like a bad electric connection. The failure rate was something like 50% on these and he bought four. So I probably need to go over them. To, it probably is bad soldering, but I didn't have my equipment with me at this place. But with these I can just, like for lab work, uh, can connect 80 pin hard drives to my controller card and read and write them if I need it. But the ship's always nice to have now that I have an EEPROM burner. And last of all, so this is an Intel CPU, more modern one, but I think it's like 10 years old now at this point. So this is a 12 core Intel CPU, I think they retailed 20, for 2500 USD back in the day when they were new. So it's the Xeon E5 2697V2, but it's 30 megabyte of L3 cache and 12 cores with hyper threading. So yeah, for multi threaded it should be pretty fine. Obviously modern CPUs are much faster, but uh, this actually fits my uh, workstation here for where I'm doing YouTube. And I have an 8-core Xeon in there, slightly faster when it comes to clocks, but uh, that CPU would fit better than another motherboard. So I'm probably going to swap them around. So that's another nice donation. I can clean this up and put in my lab computer here when I'm doing YouTube videos. And the next thing I got in the mail today is uh, this Pension 2 uh, heatsink and fan. So it's a CPU cooler. So yeah, I have some plans for this cooler. Yeah, that was donated by Axel, the P2 cooler. He did also donate this card. Axel is a friend of mine and uh, yeah, he sent this in. It's a Riva TNT. I was also looking for that for a specific reason. And he had two of these, he said, and this one is damaged physically. It's a lot of things knocked off and he said it didn't work. I believe it's just defect question mark, which means defective. It's a question like, is it defective? So, and obviously, the name and no one can read, but that is Swedish for defective question mark. So, I guess we'll find out, uh, see if this post at all, or what's going on with this one, and uh, see if it's an easy fix or a hard fix. Uh, so, a lot of things on the back missing, but this seems to mostly be, from what I can see, uh, filter caps uh, for the RAM and somewhere around the AGP, I think. So yeah, thanks to Axel, I have two parts I need for a future YouTube project that I'm planning, but uh, I don't want to go into that yet until I have all the funds and everything to actually start the project. But I think what we should do is actually test this card, fix it, and uh, if we can, and uh, then we test this card too, and uh, we recap it, test it, see if we can benchmark it, I think, see if see what kind of score we're getting with a really fast item XP, I think. So what I'm thinking is we're gonna do these two cards in this video and uh, hopefully I have two working cards that I can use. So this is gonna be like a lab card. This is intended for a project. So we're gonna start with this one because uh, 
test is the biggest question mark. This was uh, supposed to work. Just a basic recap, partial recap. So yeah, yeah, let's start out with this one. So I have the card hooked up here in my Pension 3 motherboard. So I'm gonna turn the power on here now. And uh, see what happens here. I have postcodes, you can see them, but behind the card is post -leads. And I think it has a speaker, this board is pretty good for post testing stuff. I have a blue LED here though. Yeah, Riva. 4400 something. So this is posting. I was under the impression it didn't post even. But that's good. Let's see what happens here. Complaints about my 40 pin cable for my idea drive, but that's fine. So I have a Windows 98 hard drive here with drivers and stuff on it so we can install the card if it works. Let me switch over to some VJ capture. I think that should work now. Let's continue here. The card is detected or something. Let's play a list of drivers. Let's try that. Show I have a disk. Yeah, that one should work, I hope. Yeah, TNT found. It's a pretty old driver. It's uh, I think one of the earlier ones for GeForce 3 cards. Finish. Yes. Yeah, we're at the desktop here, so that's good. So yeah, he said the card was defective, but uh, yeah, exactly how defective, I don't know. Uh, yes, I just want to match my screen resolution with my capturing I'm doing here. So we have our TNT, the TNT found. I suppose because it actually works to the desktop where you can try some random 3D Mark 2000. I know it's missing uh, ceramic caps, a lot of them. Uh, and I don't know what condition the electrolytics are in, but uh, yeah. So this might crash out uh, if the caps are bad. So yeah, benchmark. I also never had a TNT, so I. I'm not sure exactly how well they perform. Uh, a friend of mine back in the day had one in his Pension 2 250 MHz system, if I recall. And I did get that uh, slot uh, one cooler. Might hint, to hint at what I'm trying to do. And we got uh, 2,130 points, so we got through the benchmark, so that is nice. I did ask the previous owner, uh, Axel, about the card, and he said he has two of these. This, this one didn't post, according to him. But the other one he has that is uh, not damaged uh, posts for him. So it's a little bit weird that it's running for me, but it does have damage and we need to rectify that. So that should be the next step. I have the card here under the microscope. I'm summed out, zoomed out as much as I can. So you can see one of the 10 um, microfarad electrolytics here, right there, 16 volts. I think it's 3.3 volt over it actually. I think this whole card is 2.3 volt. The RAM should be SD RAM. So the RAM is over here. There is space for a voltage regulator here, but there's none. And uh, I think this chip is 250 nanometers, so it kind of makes sense if it runs at something like 3 volts. Let's turn it over. I can actually look at some of the damage. So it's fine over here though. It's some these stickers were here. Less than gunk. I'm gonna remove that. But uh, we got uh, obviously the RAM on the other side now, so this is the edge, automotive edge. And we got some filtering caps for all the RAM chips, so we got some here too. So there's RAM underneath here. And we got all these filtering caps here, probably go, should go between ground and uh, 3.3 volts. And here is the other line of RAM under here. And uh, let's see, here's one of the problems we have, or two of them. So this RAM chip lacks this one and this one, and those are capacitors. I don't know the value, we could technically dissolve the one and uh, measure it, but there's probably one nano farad. It's that on the Voodoo 2, if I recall. And this is the same vintage, so here's another one. So yeah, I guess if you lose enough of them, they might make the card unstable. Losing a few, usually not a big deal. 
uh, at least not short term. Uh, I was afraid when he sent the picture and I saw this because I figured, oh, the, the bent or hit the, like the the, the card, uh, like the Voodoo 3 I re reballed, so I figured I'm gonna have to reball it. And uh, yeah, it could still be that that is a problem, but uh, yeah, I, don't, I hope it's not. It works uh, when I test post it now, as you saw. So we're gonna also replace these. These are obviously filter and caps for the B core. So this is the GPU here. So these surround the GPU's backside here. And in, in the middle there should be ground, I guess, like any other card of this era. And let's see. Yeah, and over here is also a cap. So C here, so C609. So this is also missing cap. Uh, don't remember if it's 12 volt out on the AGP connector edge here, but yeah, most likely just cash on ripper coming in from the AGP slot, uh, one of the rails. So yeah, that is actually the problems that I know of, uh, and uh, electrolytics might be bad, but we're gonna start putting on some uh, some new caps, uh, ceramic caps on this card uh, from a donor board. So I already picked some up and put in a stash here. We're gonna start cleaning this up. So a lot of these old uh, broken ceramic uh, caps, they usually have some residue of that in here in the solder. So we have to remove that first before we can uh, wick it. Uh, if you're wondering, my iron is at 320 centigrades right now. Seems to be more than enough for this. I'm also using leaded solder. Uh, just a lower melting point, much easier to deal with. And that's also what is on this old stuff, so... Good to stick with what is on the board already. And the flux is Amtec. If you're new to the channel, it could be good to know what I'm using. But there are plenty of alternatives out there nowadays. I had um, I got a big bottle a while ago, so and I made a new solder because it's just easier. The old one is usually oxidized and uh, yeah. There might not be enough, like it's just easier to add some fresh solder, even if you're just gonna remove it again. It's a bit counterintuitive sometimes, if you knew, but that's how it is. I feel like my wick got saturated with solder, so. I also feel like I got stuck. <laughs> That's uh, annoying. Well, apparently my iron decided to go to sleep. That kind of explains why it uh, went poorly. Sometimes it does that even when I use it because uh, this card uh, sucks up so little heat. So I decided to go to sleep. But when I looked at it, it wasn't actually like cooled down enough according to the temperature and the indication. It's kind of weird. That explains that though. Yeah, much easier with some actual heat in the iron solder tip. Also, there were some old ceramics on the cap left. That's sometimes an issue where it gets in between the wick and the pad when I've knocked them off. We are at the GPU now. So we have two broken there. Yeah. 
Now we can really see the ceramic parts. I need to remove that. Just annoying. Trying to wick it without removing it first. Should have a smaller wick, but it is what it is. I think this is the last broken one. So, I think we're gonna start here uh, with these uh, at the GPU here, uh, mainly because I don't want to do them with hot air. Uh, probably fine doing them with hot air, I've done it before, but since the card is working, I don't want to risk any kind of damage to the PCB and ship like warping for some reason that could cause me to have to reball it. So I'm just gonna do this by hand, I think, even if it might look a little bit crooked. Um, you can usually do it by hand anyway, and then just hot there it so it flows properly in place. Uh, so it looks good, but I don't think it's worth it to risk uh, put, uh, risk risk damaging. You, you, I don't think it's worth it just to have it look a little bit nice on the back. Uh, if uh, if you happen to damage it in the process, so I think we could, should just try to do our best by hand. And yeah, micro soldering station would help probably, but I don't have one. So this is 1.6 millimeter tip, and it's probably what a lot of people have anyways. Usually a standard tip. I'm actually just gonna do that on side now and then move to the next so I can turn the card card around after this. Then I don't have to turn it around multiple times. Alternatively is to use my left hand but I'm right handed and it's just done. So yeah, Axel that donated this card is a uh, viewer off the channel, so that's always fun. Let's see here, we forget where we're. Can turn it again, I said I wouldn't, but uh, yeah. We we'll probably have to turn it two more times if I didn't do it the way I did from the beginning, anyway. But the reason I'm turning this time is to remove some solder there to make it look a little bit nicer. So that should be the GPU sorted. Just remove the worst of the flux before it uh, goes hard. Like you should really remove it if you can when it's uh, when you're spinning there because when it gets cold, that's when it gets sticky. You can obviously use something to heat it up with, like a hot air station or something. But if you, you if your only thing you have is a solder iron, you can save a little bit of cleaning time by taking it, the, removing most of it early on. This went so well, I think we're just gonna skip the hot air. I was planning on using hot air here, but we'll see. We might change our mind if something someone gets somewhat crooked and ugly, and we can use it to flow it in place. So I like to add the flux after I got the first uh, like solder blob down to take it in place. 
Det är just så här som flux under the pair, between the pair and the component. Uh, so that's why. I forgot the flux, but be the end. So let's check for some shorts because uh, we added components that might actually be broken. I don't think so, but you never know with ceramics they can actually go short. So I'm just gonna quickly check that we have reasonable values well, I have like 1k there so that's not that short I should check one of these because they should all be connected to the same like ground plane and obviously uh, 2.3 volt for the memory and we got like some 50 ohms here so since they're all doing the same thing in the same like parallel there's no reason why there would be any difference. And they're all like 748 for me. So they're all part of the same uh, voltage rate, the VMM. So there's no reason to think anything is shorter now. So yeah, that's the uh, ceramic caps out of the way. That should filter the VMM properly. Let's go for these electrolytics here. Yes, we could try doing them under the microscope because these are so small. This is the one closest to the actual GPU. I think the GPU is somewhere around here. Like the PCB of the GPU ends. It's, it's on its own little PCB and so on. The only little package. Uh, the heatsink sticks out a bit, which is annoying if you would have to do like repairs in here. So let's see if you can see actually. Yes, yeah, so there is the GPU. I do have a razor blade, which we could use here to just shield the GPU from not getting hot air blown in uh, under the balls there. Soldering back, I'm gonna have to use my longest, narrowest tip, but that should be fine, I think. Good stuff. So a little bit tricky that one, and with uh, the hot air I wanted to have a razor blade falling over. Uh, and the cap smell, smells like fish because I blew it up. But that's fine. I actually taken these off another card and they didn't blow up, so that's interesting. Anyways, the, that's the risk with the electrolyte in them. And the, the, it was just annoying to get to that one. See if this, this one goes easier.
So I'm just going to put my razor blade over the ram here to shield it a bit from heat. I do need to shield uh, those pins there. If I don't want to replace them, I want them to look ugly. They don't serve any purpose, but uh, yeah. Just going to put some foil over. You can get from your wife or something, a girlfriend, if she's a kitchen master. Uh, yeah. Some foil and uh, yeah, my razor blade and uh, upper edge here, just to shield uh, the more sensitive stuff. So another little tricky one next to the GPU here. See if I can get it without blowing it up, but 50-50 uh, I So we have a cluster here of three, so I mean, I guess some of them are definitely gonna pop because of the heat. Because I can't take them all at the same time. So yeah, at this point I think you can figure out what you're gonna do. I'm gonna have to clean up these pads and uh, solder on some new caps. So let's see here, I have some brand new caps here, 22 microfarads, the only ones were 10, both are 16 volts, so yeah, I'm gonna upgrade on a little bit, but that's fine. I put the card on the hot plate instead, and when I'm gonna put the caps on, uh, mainly to make the solder flow more easily, so it's around 90 centigrade now, and the uh, caps are rated 105, so that's fine. So this is the tricky one. So I think we start with that one. If we get that one and uh, out of the way, there's one on the other side too. But that it's closer to the corner should have been an issue. And that one, the pads are in the correct orientation should have been an issue. So put some flux here. So I think I'm actually going to start on the outside on this one, just to tack it in place. So the heat sink here, the, it's not removable, it's glued in place and it's annoying. So everything is very inconvenient here. So now comes the tricky part, so get some solder in there. So yeah, I think that's pretty much perfect. So the rest should be a little bit easier. So let's take the one down in the corner here, do the same. It's not as bad as the other one. So this is where the hot plate is really nice because you can remove them and uh, the solder really flows. Somewhere around 90 degrees, somewhere around 79 to 90 when I measured. So yeah. So this is just gonna be a nice, much nicer bond. Like the solder is gonna go under the uh, under the whole pad most likely.
So that should be all of the caps. So basically we have to clean up the card, put it back together again with the bracket and stuff. We don't really need to, but and then test it again. And hopefully it should work just fine as it did before, but uh, yeah, might not have been perfectly stable before, but uh, that should be rectified now, I hope. So while we wait for the other card to dry in the oven, because I've cleaned it, I uh, figure we kept this card, so we got uh, 16 volts, 470 microfarads over here, and the other 5 over here at 1000 microfarads, 6.3 volts, so yeah, I'm gonna replace them with pretty much the same, different brand, but same values, found in my slightly cheaper cap uh, box, because these aren't any fancy caps at all, so I'm gonna put on something equivalent, these should be polymer, I'm guessing, because... Uh, we don't have the vents, and I think these has gone bad mostly due to age. So, and the polymer really doesn't age that uh, on the shelf, so to speak, shouldn't be a problem. So I don't think these are bad, and I don't have any replacements anyway. So I like to add some flux here, some Amtex flux. Actually helps with the solder, the tin not sticking to the solder mask. Uh, and do that a little bit, otherwise, just keep keeps solder away from the board where I don't want it. Usually they come out by themselves but uh, this one didn't. It was loose but uh, maybe the legs were a little bent. Yeah, let's add some caps back. So I'm gonna start with the odd one here for a 12 volt incoming rail here on the Mulex. So that's that one. So yeah, we didn't test this card, but it should be working. And now we have new caps, so I'm not that worried about this card. Not working. So yeah, a bit of a wash in the sink, and then we can uh, put it in the oven and then assemble it again. And actually test this, um, but I'm gonna get out the Nathan XP, I think, and socket the motherboard. The TNT2 card is finished. I got it out of the oven and I put on the bracket, now your bracket. Looks nice and it's uh, definitely clean now. Did some probing because I seen a picture online on a similar card, not identical, but it had a fan mountain from factory. 
I assume because it had a sticker on it with the same name as the PCB head, the manufacturer. So over here should be some positive voltage. And I figured out I measured the card when I was running before off camera. It's uh, five volts. So I checked that uh, when we had post last time before I shut everything down. So we could use a five volt fan because they had to connect a fan to there and to one of the pads over here. But on my car, I like that one. It seems to be it's a jumpy, jumpy tree, it says here. And the shape of the silk screen in the PCB looks like a fan connector. So I took the multimeter and checked if something is ground. That's ground. I figure I could check if I know that this is 5 volts. Uh, and a lot of these old graphics cards use 5 volt fans. What's over on the other one? So there is also. 5 volts it seems, I got continuity, 0 ohms. So 5 volts seems to come in on this side on the second pin from the bottom, the bottom pin there. So what I want to do, not in this video, but in a future video when I'm going to use this card is to actually hook up a fan on here. I would do it now if I had a fan, but I definitely don't have a 5 volts fan that is 40 by 40 millimeter. But yeah, I think adding a fan there. In the future, when I'm gonna use this card, it's gonna be nice with an extra touch to it. But we're gonna test it now because that's uh, what we're waiting for. So the card is back in the motherboard here. So I'm gonna turn on the power after I connected the power. And keyboard. I got blue light, yeah, just posting. So let's see. Now set the refresh rate to 60 so I can swap over to the capture card. So we're back on the capture hardware here. And apparently it's 4 in the morning. Let's see here. That checks out. We didn't go in here before, but why not? Well, I cleaned off the, the stick, it fell off from the bio ship, so it doesn't know what bias it is now. Mm. Let's see what kind of clocks this card around because I don't know. I think we might be able to find out here. If we go to GPU, maybe. It's not always right though. 90 megahertz, so 90 to 95 is normal, what I read. So that should be correct. Memory should be 110 to 112. So that seems correct. I'm gonna run it through 3D Mark 2000 again just to see that it passes that. So we had another successful run on 3D Mark 2000. So yeah, but well, a bit hard to compare when the card actually didn't misbehave before. So I set the screen monitor to 32 bit color because I want to try out a demo I just compiled that I'm working on. So it's called a TU95. It's not the actual thing I'm working on, but it's like a sandbox. So you can try out the assets. In this case, this plane here I'm modeling. So it uh, runs my own code here for uh, OpenGL through something called GLUT. It's uh, like a window, window based uh, library that sets up the, the OpenGL environment for you. I've been uh, modeling this plane, doing the textures, um, and uh, been working on blending. It's basically how you fake transparency because OpenGL 1.1 doesn't support uh, transparency. And the same thing is goes for uh, the contrast at the back here, those are billboarded uh, quads to two triangles. Uh, billboarding just means that uh, when you make basically a 2D object, uh, so a flat uh, plane, you make it face the camera at all times, so it doesn't matter uh, how I look at it. You've probably seen the effect in a lot of old games. So that's what I've been working on to make that transparent fade in, you can see here, and fade out. And uh, 
Yeah, a real contrain starts a little bit behind the planes because they generated by the engine exhaust, the soot in the exhaust reacts with the moisture in there. So this black here is the soot from these uh, turboprop fans. So I also model, modeled a Swedish fighter plane and a little bit stuff like that. So I'm working on a demo. So this is just uh, like the sandbox environment to try out my models. But it's running uh, in OpenGL on this card and it's a little bit slow apparently. This card doesn't seem to be fast enough for, for this model. You can actually check the frame rate. Press D there, so around 37, 31 here around, yeah, around 30. At 640 by 480. Should obviously increase. Running 32 bit colors also makes it run slow, but it's, it really looks bad at 16 bit. I could probably ditter the background to make it look better. But anyway, it's just fun to try your own bit of uh, OpenGL code and the modeling on uh, an old TNT card, just for fun, because you can. The card is out of the oven been drying for a couple of hours so let's put it back together and try it out the right amount of paste is too much paste Seeing where is the fan over there, fan connector, so I can get it the right way around. I don't think this card has been used much because the fan seems to be mint and everything is clean, nice. So I think the caps just went bad off, uh, due to old age and being crap caps. I don't think there's anything wrong with the polymer because they shouldn't really age much from sitting around. So let's get this in a motherboard and try it out. So for my motherboard, I'm gonna use this uh, DFI LAN porting, so N42 Ultra 400. Uh, put an Athlon XPM, so a mobile chip in there that I showed off uh, in a previous video. So I have binned it in two out of three motherboards, so it will run at 2.4 GHz. <laughs> if it's like 16 C inside and you have a, like AMD stock cooler, one of the bigger ones. I don't have a good heatsink free right now that is really big or yeah. ideally you need water if you're gonna run a, like ambient and up it's a bit of an issue with air to run at those speeds if you want to like actually have stability but it's uh, winter in Sweden right now so it's cold you have to fight for heat so running this thing cold right now inside isn't a problem just uh, turning down the thermostat inside so and I got this bigger uh, Tysol I think it's called. I don't remember how the name was called back in the day. I think we call it Tysol in Sweden, but uh, yeah, uh, it's a classical heatsink. Uh, people recognize it. I did have to put on a different fan though because the original wasn't on there. But yeah, so that's uh, it's copper base and everything on that one. So it's pretty beefy. Yeah, let's power this up and uh, see what kind of scores we can get. Don't know if this Windows install is fully functioning now. I have used it on a couple of motherboards here, but hopefully that works and we can hopefully add drivers too. Oh, ah, yeah. So it seems to be working already. Let's increase the resolution here. Yes, please. So I'm capturing at 30 frames here now in 1080p. But it seems like the drivers I had uh, in Windows 2000 was compatible with the card. That's good. And I'm gonna run 3 Mark 2000, which is you know, technically too old for a card like this. But uh, it's gonna uh, basically replace or be a substitute to like a 2003 card, high-end card, so I think it's still relevant. Um, and just for comparison, 
So I want to run uh, Trimark 2019 to know where it lands relative to my 5900 Ultra, which I have pushed to something like 18,386 points, I think. So the results are in and it lost to my 5900 Ultra. But uh, I would say that's mainly due to this thing running 400 bus of memory. And I did run 500 bus of memory when I got my record. And I'm running 470 on my current FX5900 Ultra machine with, uh, with a similar Barton but a desktop version. Uh, this clocks uh, pretty well still. The motherboard really doesn't like to go any higher on the core clock. So. But anyway, this is a good result. It's basically like a 5900 Ultra overclocked. Uh, so that's good. Exactly what I needed for testing of like Atalon XP CPUs. And just for fun, I think we can check here what CPU we have here. So yeah, this is the CPU from my last video, my previous video. So we're running uh, 1.8 volt at 2,400 MHz, and this is prime 9 to 5 stable for 24 hours. Uh, when I have 16 centigrade inside, with uh, basically one of those uh, aluminium heat sinks with a copper base and a 60 millimeter fan. So with some water, I think we can run this even on a warmer day. But yeah, I don't have a water block right now that fits socket A, so that's the main issue there. But it's fast and it's fun. We had a happy ending here. Uh, we have a working uh, TNT card. It was already working before. I don't know why it didn't work for uh, Axel that donated it. Uh, I suspect maybe his uh, 3.3 volt line is a little bit lower and maybe more ripple on it. And that was what triggered or made it fall over the edge, so to speak. Uh, so new caps and we put on the ceramic they were missing. I also sent in this Pensin 2 cooler that I'm gonna need. Then our new head and lead moderator, um, Katos from Denmark, sent in uh, this card donation. And uh, yeah, recap that, tested it. It's gonna be a good substitute for uh, the more expensive cards like the 5900 Ultras. And then our server owner for Discord uh, sent in the SCSI adapters I'm gonna need for some projects and stuff. Mostly maintenance related, so not really so much for YouTube as that I know of, but you never know. Uh, BIOS chips uh, and a CPU upgrade for my YouTube uh, lab computer here. So yeah, I think that's it. And uh, yeah, everything worked out. So thank you for watching and have a nice day. You can join us on our Discord server, we host public LANs when possible and game nights on our server hosting many old classical multiplayer games like Quake, Counter Strike and much more. Or you can show off your own retro LAN or maybe visit our members private LAN parties. We have a galleries, benchmark channels where you can post images, videos of your retro hardware and your scores and much more. So come and join us and share your retro experience with us. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.